So we know now that we need paths in a conversation in order to design the conversation in a logical and structured way. Now path is actually going to ultimately lead the user, the visitor, from the beginning of the bot to the optimal exit for them given their goals. Actually, if I think about it, I could draw a line from the each user goal to which of the deliverables would satisfy that user goal. And then I could start to think about what decisions do I have to make along the way to guide the customer down that particular exit. If we went back real quick for a review of the goals, the choices, the outcomes that we had identified in the previous section, we recognized that we had a bunch of visitor choices, learning or uh, getting help, workshop or coaching, inquiry or callback and things. So we have all of these Baxby visitor choices and uh, we are uh, ultimately trying to satisfy the user's goal of either learning how to do business analysis or looking for how to get a specific deliverable or a specific uh, business analysis task completed, which we call services uh, versus training. We also define the outcomes. We could recommend train, uh, for training, we can recommend lean or agile books or courses, whichever, uh, waterfall or traditional books and courses, or both book and courses of, of either uh, methodology. And the desired outcomes, if they're looking for service, are basically going to be either live chat or they're going to request that we contact them. Whether we're doing a workshop or a coaching in either situation, we're going to be asking for those things. Armed with that information, what we really want to do now is try to start to create a decision tree. And I'm basically going to walk you through the process of creating a decision tree using a tool called Lucid Chart, which is available online. There's a free version of it you can register for. When, if you're going to be doing the exercises, you're going to be following along uh, with us, you may want to go to Lucid Chart and create an account. So for starters, I'll show you where to go and how to get started with that. So to get an account on Lucid Chart, you go to lucidchart.com. It's a very simple process. You can apply for a free account. If you don't have one, it's going to actually open up the entire world of a lot of different diagramming types. But of course, the one that we are interested in are decision trees. So that's the only one we're going to be talking about in this course. If you find any of the others that are very useful, we hope you enjoy it. Once you have created your account, you log in and you're ready to go. We have created the Lucidchart table over here on the left, which gives the symbols that we want to be able to use in our decision tree. This is kind of a setup that we've created that we found very useful for the decision tree. Remember, our goal here is basically to create a breakdown of how we are going to help users get from their original intent from entering the bot down to a recommended solution, a resolution of what it is they're trying to achieve. You have to start the bot with a welcome message. We've already talked about that. And I have to explain one thing here. On our representation of this decision tree, you're, we are using some color coding to help us understand the difference between a bot message, a choice, and information that is being provided to the visitor. Yellow is basically going to be where the bot is asking the user a question. And the blue squares are basically choices that the user has. You will ultimately find for every uh, choice that a user has at any point in time in the bot, you're going to see one of these blue boxes showing up, giving them the option of choosing that particular thing. We don't know at this point in time whether that's going to be a button, an image, a uh, text, what it's going to be. We don't care at this point in time because all we are saying is these are the choices that the user has to make in order for us to be able to create the chart, to be able to follow that decision path along to get, lead them to their ultimate goal. There's another concept in, uh, that LandBot supports called a persistent menu, and we're going to be talking about that a little later on, so I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail on it at this point in time. It's just a way of jumping into, this, into the bot at different points uh, kind of taking shortcuts if you've used the bot a lot. Uh, so that's what a persistent menu is all about. We've decided that we've got a welcome message. We have the blue box, which is giving them the start choice. And this is where they decide that they're going to come in to the bot. Next thing the bot has to do is it has to understand whether you're looking for training or service, making that distinction. And because of that, we have to create possible outcomes, which are the blue boxes, the user choice going uh, if they decide that they want training uh, as opposed to service, then one of the choices is obviously going to have to be training. And the opposite choice, if they don't choose training, is going to be service. That splits the decisions into those two options 
for anybody that's coming in. I need to know if you're trying to learn how to do it or if you're trying to get a job done. Following first off the training leg, of the training decision path, uh, if we know that you want to have training, then the next thing we need to know is what kind of a software development methodology are you looking for? Are you looking for the traditional waterfall or the agile methodologies I want to get to? Uh, so that's a distinction we have to make in order to be able to understand what to best recommend. Because remember, we have offers that support both lean and agile as well as waterfall approaches. I need to have that decision. I need to get that information first. The choices that you're going to have here are going to be either traditional waterfall or lean and agile, or I don't know or don't care, unknown or both, whichever you prefer. Anything of that nature that says, well, I am not going to make it dependent on that because I'm just trying to learn business analysis. I don't know what methodologies I'm going to be confronted with. So those are the choices that are coming out of the software development methodology or SDM question. Because in this particular instance, we are going to need to know this information later on in the bot, I'm going to have to keep track of it. One of the secrets about bots, generally speaking, is when they are asking the end user for information, they're asking them to make a choice, they will recognize which choice you made in that particular instant, but they may not keep that information as you move on to other steps in the bot. This is true of quite a few bots, Landbot not being an exception. If you want to remember that information for later usage, you need to put it in what's called a variable. We're going to create a variable called SDM, Software Development Methodology, and we're going to there remember which choice you made so we can use that information later on in deciding on what we want to offer you. That's actually an important component of the bot thinking is that if you want memory, you need to actually request it. It doesn't matter at this point whether you said lean, agile, traditional, or unknown. We're now going to go to the next question or the next decision we need from you is, okay, how do you prefer to learn? Do you like to learn by yourself or do you prefer to learn with a coach, with somebody helping you along the way? So the actual options we're going to offer you here are, do you want to read books? Would you prefer to see video courses? Or would you prefer to work with a live uh, coach or e-mentor? Because we are using everything in uh, online nowadays, we're focusing on e-coaching or e-mentoring. So which of those three choices would you like to make? Uh, tell us if you want, or if you'd rather prefer to learn by reading, by watching videos, or by coaching. If you're going to the coaching route, that one is actually one of the areas where we need to then schedule a interaction with a human being. We are going to uh, try to get some more information about you. We need to get your, your uh, personal information in order to be able to contact you and chat about what your coaching desires are, what you want to learn, and how you want to get there. We're going to offer you the option of chat now. If, if there is somebody available, uh, give me some contact information and we'll contact you later. Or would you like an explanation, the learn more option, of what coaching or mentoring is all about? So those are the three options that are going to come out of that particular choice. We're going to take a look at uh, what we're going to recommend if you are looking for books or video courses. And in either situation, we're going to come into what is called conditional logic. Conditional logic basically says, I am going to use the uh, variables that I have captured, such as the SDM and as you can see here, we're also going to capture whether you wanted books, video courses, or coaching. And based on that information, I'm going to make the determination as to what, what the recommendation is. This allows me to ask the questions, to have the conversation flow, and then when I'm done with the flow, say, okay, based on all of the information you have provided, these are my answers. So in our situation, because we can satisfy both Lean and Agile, as well as the traditional software development methodologies, we're going to use the conditional logic at this point to branch off into exactly what offer we are going to make. If you said you want Lean and Agile uh, as a methodology and you wanted books, then we would branch you off into the final deliverable. And these green printout symbols basically represent the outcomes where we are saying, okay, that's the recommendation of the bot. At this point, we're going to suggest, we're actually going to give you the option to choose of all of the books on Lean and Agile that we offer, which one do you like? or of all of the courses on Lean and Agile, which one you do, would you like, or traditional or waterfall, and, and so on and so forth. In this case, we're actually going to have outcomes that you might come up with based on the combination of your software development methodology and 
the uh, learning mode that you prefer, the learning uh, style that you prefer. That's going to come up with exactly what are the uh, recommendations of the bot going to be in this case. We also have to take into account if you had selected unknown as one of your methodology choices, then we are going to have to react to that in some way, shape, or form. We'll deal with the unknown methodology or both methodologies, whichever you pick there, uh, however you express that, uh, and we're going to have to satisfy that as well. So we're going to have to have a list of all of the courses or all of the books, depending on what your choice was here, uh, at this point in time, so you can just pick and choose whatever you want. And this is an example, by the way, of how at this point in time I could uh, create a fairly simple solution to this situation and then later on improve the bot. If we learn that there are a lot of people going this route, then we may actually want to expand the bot to include more choices. This is a lean approach to creating the bot as opposed to trying to figure out everything in the world up front. We're going to get, try to go for the biggest bang for the buck. We're going to try to develop the bot in a manner that uh, it will satisfy some one group of customers' needs, ideally the most lucrative group. And then once we've identified that uh, it's up and running and we, are, we can look at the statistics, we can analyze how the bot's performing, we can recognize what are the paths most often chosen, and we can focus on improving those paths and not worry too much about wasting time picking on paths that nobody is choosing anyway.